the prayer was said at the invitation of a free Presbyterian minister and delivered at a Highland Regional Council meeting by this man, Monsignor Thomas Wynne of Farisaig. The free Presbyterian thought his invitation good manners, but his church ruled suspension. I was asked when it came my turn to open the meeting with prayer by the Reverend Alec Murray, which I did. And indeed, I was shocked six months afterwards, no, it was six months after this, that it became known what had happened. And when the press phoned me up, I must say that I, I was aghast that here was a, a very fine man being reprimanded severely by his church because he had asked another clergyman to say a prayer, to ask God's guidance at the beginning of a meeting. As far as you know, purely and simply because you were a Roman Catholic. It seems to be, and it's very, very sad indeed. Of course, I got one of the shocks of my life. I found myself altogether su suspended from both the ministry and from even the ordinary privileges of a member in the, ch in the church. And uh, that certainly is a great trauma in my life. Did you have any idea at all when you invited Monsignor Wynne to say a prayer that this might fall about your head? Well, I must confess I, I did think of it, but um, giving it uh, some careful thought, I had no doubts as to what I should do as to where my duty lay. God is not free Presbyterian or Roman Catholic, or Church of Scotland, or Baptist. God is love. And it's terrible to think that, the, that uh, somebody in the Free Pres Presbyterian Church should place an injunction on God as to whose prayer God should listen to. The case of the Christmas tree that wasn't, the carols that were never sung. The setting, a primary school at Evanton in Russia, where the children looked forward to the usual celebrations. But the then headmaster, Ian MacDonald, a staunch free Presbyterian, had very firm views. Mr MacDonald was, I don't know if he's a member, but he was certainly in the free Presbyterian church, and he did not believe that Christmas trees, or later on carols, had any part in the Christmas uh, festivities. And he decided that he would not have these in the school. I imagine then, there was some pressure from a group of parents. That, well, the that parents felt otherwise, yes, and, and the director of education had to try and reconcile them, just as Mr. MacDonald, the head teacher, had to try and reconcile his religious beliefs with his job. And at the end of the day, Mr. MacDonald came down on the side of his religious beliefs. In an out-of-court settlement, Mr. MacDonald received £20,000 from the regional council for loss of earnings, distress and inconvenience. Historically, uh, Christmas has its origin in a pagan festival which uh, was baptised, if I may use the word, by the Church of Rome into the Christian church. And therefore the reformers in Scotland abolished Christmas and we follow that. How then do you regard the, the many millions in Scotland who celebrate Christmas perhaps in quite a pagan way with purchases and, and uh, rejoicings and uh, feastings? Well, we regard that uh, with great sorrow, really. But what does particularly pain us is uh, that the name of Christ should be associated with that kind of uh, amusement. Here, Alistair Fraser, a 12 handicap player, enjoyed a game of golf, but never on a Sunday. However, when he applied to join the Free Presbyterian Church, he was bunkered. A synod took the, the decision of the Kirk session and agreed that I was in breach of the fourth command. Even although you did not yourself play on the Sabbath? That's right, and that was well known and accepted. What effect did that have on you? I was confused, didn't understand it at first, and took a good while to think about it, because it was over a period of years before I finally went back to the session, spoke to various people, and you know, looked at everything in the, in the light of scripture, and I came to the conclusion that I was right. Not even the House of Windsor has escaped the strictures of the Free Presbyterians. 
Two years ago, the Synod of the FP Church petitioned the Queen in connection with the presence of Prince Charles, heir to the throne, at a requiem mass. We uh, take the view that uh, his presence there cast a shadow on the question of his being a successor, because the successor to the Queen is the Queen herself, uh, take uh, a Protestant oath to maintain the Protestantism of uh, the throne, and therefore uh, we petitioned the Queen on this particular matter because we thought that uh, it was a dangerous step and uh, that our attention should be drawn to it. We did previously, of course, before we petitioned, to draw Prince Charles' uh, attention to it, but the reply we got from his secretary was very unsatisfactory, so we petitioned the Queen about it. And did you get satisfaction well, she, from no, Her well, Majesty? Well, no, 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 she just, it was just answered that she had seen it and noticed a concern, but there wasn't any further detail, no. So then how does that leave the church regarding Prince Charles as an unsatisfactory person? Well, uh, we would hope that we will continue uh, to, uh, uh, to put before him uh, that uh, this conduct we do not think is proper for an heir to the throne. Discipline, it has been called hunting discipline, is seldom far from the church's affairs. May nots abound. Women may not cut their hair, may not be heard in church affairs. Sunday papers may not be read, even on a Monday. The principle of discipline is, first of all, for the good of the church itself, and it is for the good of the offender. I would like to make quite clear that any impression that uh, we are going around looking for cases of discipline, as it were, is quite false. I um, mean, well, in my particular case, in 28 years I've been here, I've just had two cases and they were resolved. But it is true that a certain amount of, uh, I would say, excessive publicity has been given to certain cases. One who gives publicity to the Free Presbyterians is journalist Angus MacLeod, who experienced them as a child on Lewis. The church gives much material for his pen. The major response from fellow islanders is that uh, you should never have, ever tell stories out of school, and certainly not out of church. Um, the second uh, response has always been that uh, people have said to me, you know, uh, but how do you know, because you, you're now living on the mainland, so how would you know? It's always defensive. It's always, that's the major point of it. The major element is uh, the desire of it always to say, you know, really quite frankly, I mean, honestly, can you not write about something else? And I just find that in itself a little bit uh, self-destructive in, in the sense of the church being self-destructive and people from the islands being self-destructive. It's almost as if, George, people were saying to you, um, you can only talk about um, the Free Presbyterian Church in reverential terms, and you must never talk about them in any way as um, having done anything to anyone. At home, the Free Presbyterian Church's affairs are untrammeled by excessive publicity. Its young people are as certain in their faith as are their elders. No doubts, no assailing pressure from a secular and consumerist society. However, the way we are represented in the media is, is basically a gross caricature of us which has no bearing in, in reality at all. And a lot of people that read, for example, the tabloid newspapers must assume that, that we are the sort of people who go around uh, locking our cockerels up on, <laughs> up on the Sabbath to keep them away from the hens. I've lived in a free Presbyterian match for 30 years. And <laughs> that, that idea is certainly news to me. I think we all have had a strict upbringing. I mean, as compared to normal worldly houses who do not attend church, you know, I mean, we were brought up that, you know, you didn't go out to the disco, you didn't have a TV in the house. I mean, just small things like that, but I would say it was a strict upbringing. I would say I have not lost anything from my upbringing. In fact, I've probably benefited a lot. Uh, some people might regard us as being old-fashioned because when they look at the Bible, they just decide which parts they want to follow and just discard the rest and we stick to it. And they say, well, we don't need to listen, you don't need to do that because that was written so many hundreds of years ago, it doesn't apply now, but it does. It's not so much we who have taken Christianity and narrowed it, it is others who have taken what is, according to Christ himself, a narrow way and have widened it and brought the world into it.